Welcome to Gridiron Ring, a sports talk show covering football and professional wrestling. I'm your host, the Encyclopedia of Sports, Cool Hand Luke 96. Be sure, if you haven't done so already, to follow Gridiron Ring on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Periscope. Gridiron Ring also has a website as well, if you did not know that. All the links are in the description below, including my Twitter and Instagram links. So if you want to give me a follow on Twitter, at CoolHandLuke96, or on Instagram at ElGodisArt96, all that would be greatly appreciated. So like, follow, and subscribe to Gridiron Ring. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well. You're currently looking at the profile picture for Gridiron Ring. If you like that picture, if you like this audio recording of my college football week 9 predictions, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to share with uh, friends and family as well. That's also greatly appreciated. Uh, and as I said, be sure to subscribe to Gridiron Ring right here on YouTube so you can be one of the first to get a notification whenever new content is published. So college football week 9 predictions this week. Two different videos this week, unlike the past two weeks, combining uh, college and NFL predictions the past two weeks. Today, just college, a separate video for NFL Week 8 predictions, so go check that video, that audio recording out. Uh, that video is right after this College Football Week 9 predictions video right here on YouTube. As I said, be sure to hit that subscribe button right here on YouTube if you haven't done so already. College Football Week 9 Week 8 last week, though, 20-6, and 133-57 and 57 on the year. Had some good games, had some blowouts as well, close games. Um, had an upset as well on, uh, on Saturday night. So an overall good weekend of college football. Didn't have three or four top ten teams lose, but did have the number two overall uh, team, number two ranked Ohio State Buckeyes go down in West Lafayette on Saturday night. I'll get to that game here in a minute. But I'll start off a game that was last Thursday, not last Friday, as I said last week in my predictions. This game was last Thursday out west in the Pac-12. Stanford went south to Tempe, Arizona uh, from Palo Alto. Defeated The Cardinal defeated the Arizona State Sun Devils by a touchdown 20-13. to Last Friday night in the Mountain West, Boise State, this game was actually the question of the day last Friday. So if you voted on the poll on either Facebook or Twitter, thank you for doing so. Uh, Boise State in the Mountain West defeated Colorado State at home on the blue turf, 56-28. to Then the first game on Saturday in the SEC, Auburn defeated Ole Miss, 31-16. to Bounce back win for the Tigers, Gus Malzahn. Uh, saves his job for another week. Uh, Auburn, they will be off this upcoming weekend before hosting Texas A&M the first weekend in November. In the Big Ten, Wisconsin defeated Illinois at home in Madison at Camp Randall, 49-20. First snow game of the year in college football. Also in the Big Ten, Iowa defeated Maryland at home at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, 23-0. I'll get to see Iowa this upcoming Saturday as they come right here to Happy Valley to play the Penn State Nittany Lions. Penn State defeated Indiana in Bloomington 33-28. Nittany Lions' first win in a month. Last time they won was on a Friday night, September 21st, week before they lost to Ohio State. Uh, they beat Illinois, lost to Ohio State, had a week off, lost to Michigan State there on the 13th of October. Uh almost two weeks ago now and uh, just picked up their first win in a month this past Saturday at Indiana by five hung on uh, 33 to 28 also in the Big Ten uh, up in East Lansing Michigan so Iowa comes to Penn State this Saturday I'll I'll be at that game I'll get to see the Iowa Hawkeyes uh, battle the Penn State and the Lions but in East Lansing this past weekend uh, Michigan State or Michigan, excuse me, defeated little brother Michigan State 21-7. Wolverines' first road win versus a ranked team since 2006. you got to go the whole way back to September of 06 uh, whenever uh, Michigan went to South Bend and uh, defeated Notre Dame. Oklahoma, they uh, really put the hammer to TCU uh, on the road in Fort Worth on Saturday uh, around lunchtime there, Saturday afternoon. 
Oklahoma defeated TCU 52-27. to Also a bounce-back win for the Sooners, just like Auburn bouncing back against Ole Miss. Uh, Oklahoma, they lost to Texas two weeks ago. They were off last weekend, uh, and they just defeated TCU 52-27 to in the Big 12. In the American Athletic Conference, uh, Temple uh, knocked off uh, the undefeated Cincinnati Bearcats in overtime at home uh, at the link in Philadelphia, 24-17. to um, Really ruined uh, Cincinnati's season because Cincinnati was 6-0 and uh, going into that game. Uh, there were going into that game as well. South Florida and Central Florida were also undefeated. They're still undefeated. Um, Houston's also in the mix there in the, in the American Athletic Conference at the moment. But we still got um, a little over a month uh, to play uh, in college football before we get to conference championship weekend. Got uh, one last weekend in October here, and then a full month of November, and then the conference championship games are on November 30th, Friday, November 30th, and Saturday, December the 1st. Um, but Temple, they won by seven in overtime. They're going to be off this weekend before they have to go to Orlando to play uh, Central Florida, who is also undefeated. So we'll have to see if the Temple Owls can uh, knock off two undefeated teams in the AAC in a three-week span. Uh, in the ACC, uh, not the AAC, the ACC, uh, Virginia defeated Duke 28-14. to uh, Marshall, the thundering herd of Marshall, uh, stood their ground at home as Florida Atlantic came to town. They defeated the Owls 31-7. to Penn State, as I said, hung on on the road in Bloomington, Indiana, defeated the Hoosiers by 5, 33-28. Alabama, still in a league of their own, I think. Uh, they went to Knoxville. Uh, I think a lot of people can agree with me, Alabama is still in a league of their own. They're blowing people out left and right. Yeah, they're going to have a tough test here in two weeks when they play LSU. Uh, but up to this point, they've uh, they've looked like the best team uh, in the country uh, this season. Uh, but they went to Knoxville, the Crimson Tide did, defeated the Tennessee Volunteers uh, 58-21. Tennessee, they are actually going to need volunteers to field a football team. So if you want to sign up, you can go over to Gridiron Rings Facebook Twitter and Instagram pages and be sure to hit that like and follow button and it'll send you to the link where you can sign up so be sure to go do that if you want to volunteer for the Tennessee Volunteer Football Team. Uh, out west now in the Pac-12, Washington defeated Colorado on the road by two touchdowns 27-13. to uh, Clemson showed the Wolfpack of NC State and the rest of the ACC really who the best team in the ACC is at the moment, as Clemson defeated NC State 41-7. Also in the ACC, Florida defeated Wake Forest uh, by a score of 38-17. Nebraska, they picked up their first win. They finally won a game. Uh, They beat the uh, Minnesota Golden Gophers 53-28. Missouri... Uh, they defeated Memphis 65-33 to in a rare mid-October non-conference game. Missouri in the SEC, Memphis in the AAC, the American Athletic Conference. Uh, in the SEC, though, LSU, they defeated Mississippi State at home in Baton Rouge on Saturday night, 19-3. Tigers, fourth win versus a top 25 team this season. Central Florida, as I said uh, a moment ago there, uh, they are undefeated still. Uh, they defeated East Carolina 37-10 to on the road. Uh, they, uh, as I said, they'll play Temple at home in uh, two weeks. See if Temple can beat two undefeated teams in the AAC in as many weeks. Well, as I said, three weeks. Um, Three-week span there. Um, Kentucky, uh, they're still hanging on. Uh, hanging in there in the SEC East. They defeated Vanderbilt 14-7. to Real low scoring game there. Uh, out West again there in the Pac-12. Washington State defeated Oregon 34-20. to Cougars fourth straight win against the Oregon Ducks. And that's actually for the first time since the 1980s that they've been able to do that. Uh, and then the big 
uh, upset of the weekend was on Saturday night in West Lafayette, Indiana. Purdue defeated Ohio State by 29, 49-20. Buckeyes first top two team to lose to an unranked opponent by 20 points or more since 2012. This is the third straight year Ohio State has lost on the road in the Big Ten, 2016 to Penn State, last year 2017 to Iowa, and then this year 2018, just this past weekend, to Purdue. Ranked number two uh, overall in the country, Ohio State was in the Penn State and Purdue games respectively. Uh, and I uh, went back, looked at the calendar, and they actually happened on the same weekend in October both times. It's weird how history repeats itself, isn't it, folks? Um, but a big win, a big program win for the Purdue Boilermakers on Saturday. Uh, I know one thing for sure, former uh, Boilermaker head coach Joe Tiller, who passed away last November uh, he would be very, very proud of this uh, big victory, big program victory, as I said, against the number two ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. Purdue now, uh, they're tied with Northwestern, who they lost to week one uh, in the Big Ten. They're tied with Northwestern, Iowa, and Wisconsin for the lead in the Big Ten West. All four teams only have one conference loss, but by the end of the season, they'll be... Uh, knocking each other out because they're all in the West. They all have to play each other. Purdue's already played uh, Northwestern. Iowa and Wisconsin both played this weekend as well. Um, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to see who wins uh, the Big Ten West. But right now I'd have to say Purdue, you know, coming off a big win. Uh, I'm not saying anybody, nobody's in the driver's seat right now, but Purdue probably has the most momentum. Out, out of those four teams uh, to, uh, you know, potentially win the Big Ten West and represent the West Division in the Big Ten Championship game in Indianapolis on December 1st. Uh, I also have written down here, um, Purdue, really, they should be undefeated, if you ask me. They lost Northwestern Week 1 by 4, lost Eastern Michigan Week 2 on a game-winning field goal, lost Missouri Week 3 at home while also on a game-winning field goal, uh, and, you know, so they started out 0-3. They won three or four in a row now. Um, you know, big program win, as I said, against Ohio State, 49-20. to But they they could be, and I think they should be, undefeated. But for uh, some obvious reasons, they are not. But they're still in contention to win the Big Ten West, uh, you know, this late in the year. As I said, we're going into the last weekend in October Still got a month of football left to be played after that, and uh, and then the conference championship games the week after that. Um, also, I've written down here, uh, Ohio State, they got beat plain and simple. They could not run the football to save their goddamn lives. They ran the ball 25 times, but they passed the ball 72 times because they couldn't run the ball. Um, don't have the exact stats rushing-wise in front of me, but I know they ran the ball 25 times, and um, they passed it for... Uh, they pass, Dwayne Haskins passed the ball, threw the ball 72 times in this game on Saturday night. I don't think I've ever seen that in a game in real life, you know, in person, watching on TV. Uh, obviously, yeah, I've done that myself, and I'm sure other people have as well in video games on NCAA football or on Madden, but just absolutely ridiculous that... Um, Ohio State could not run the football at all. They had to throw the ball, obviously. Common sense. You can't run the ball. you got to pass the ball in football. You know, vice versa. Um, but Ohio State, they'll be off this weekend now before playing at Michigan State. So um, we'll have to see if they can regroup this upcoming weekend and get back to their winning ways on November 3rd. Also this past weekend in college football, UAB defeated North Texas 29-21. Fresno State won over New Mexico 38-7. Utah and UCLA both won in the Pac-12. Utah defeated USC 41-28. And then UCLA defeated Arizona 31-30. So week 9 predictions now. 
got eight games combined between Thursday and Friday. Four on Thursday, four on Friday. The first one on Thursday, Baylor and West Virginia in the Big 12. Mountaineers looking to bounce back after losing to Iowa State two weeks ago. They were off last weekend. It's a Thursday night game in Morgantown. Yeah, Matt Rule will have his Baylor Bear team ready to play, but because West Virginia is playing at home at night, I'm going to pick West Virginia to defeat Baylor. If this game was at noon on Saturday, you know, I might uh, pick a little bit different there. But Thursday night game in Morgantown is going to be hard to win uh, if you're the uh, opposing team coming in and playing the West Virginia Mountaineers. So give me WVU. Toledo and Western Michigan in the MAC. I got to go with the Broncos over the Rockets and that. I got a connection with Western Michigan. So give me uh, Western Michigan uh, over Toledo. That game will be Thursday night up in Kalamazoo. Georgia Tech goes to Blacksburg to play Virginia Tech. The last 10 meetings between these two teams, dating back to 2008, have been decided by 10 points or less. Expect that again uh, this Thursday night uh, in Blacksburg. Uh, but because Virginia Tech is playing at home, give me the Hokies over the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, they're going to have to stop the triple option, but I think they'll be able to uh, do that. Bud Foster, he'll dial up some stuff on defense. He's been there how long. He should know how to coach defense uh, by now. So give me Virginia Tech over Georgia Tech, but expect a close game. App State, Appalachian State, goes to Georgia Southern. The Mountaineers of App State are ranked for the first time ever in program history. This week, they are ranked 25th overall in the AP Top 25 poll. Uh, their only loss, week one to Penn State. Uh, I saw them play that week, and that's why I'm going to pick App State to defeat Georgia Southern. But this game should be fun, should be close uh, as well in the Sun Belt on Thursday night. So give me App State over Georgia Southern. Both teams only have one loss. Um, really uh, should be a fun uh, game to watch. Friday night now, those were the four games on Thursday. The next four are on Friday, and then the rest are on Saturday. The 5-2 and two Louisiana Tech uh, Bulldogs will travel to the 3-4 and four Florida Atlantic Owls. Uh, the Florida Atlantic Owls, really somewhat of a disappointing season so far this year after winning 10 games last year, Lane Kiffin's first year there. Um, I think uh, I think the Louisiana Tech they'll they'll find a way to win late. This game I think will also be close. I believe it starts at 6:30 on Friday. Somewhat of a weird start time for you know this late in the season. Normally, if we have a game start at like five o'clock or six or 6:30 uh, on a Thursday or Friday, you know it's week one uh, or week zero. Um, but the Louisiana Tech, uh, you know, bulldog, that's a dog. Dogs are better than owls anyway, so um, give me give me uh, Law Tech over Florida Atlantic. Uh, looks like it's going to be a long season. Uh, I mean, basically already has been for the uh, lane train down there at Florida Atlantic, but um, I think it's going to be even, it's going to start to get even longer after uh, Florida Atlantic loses to Louisiana Tech. 5-2 and two, Miami goes to 5-2 and two, Boston College. Uh, teams have not played each other since 2012, even though they're both members of the ACC. Um, Miami uh, coming off a loss against Virginia there, uh, what, two weeks ago, uh, after a big win against uh, arch rival, in-state arch rival Florida State. Uh, now they got to go back up north into the cold weather. Uh, you know, it's going to start getting colder. Um, as I said, we are uh, dwindling down uh, this uh, 2018 college football season and uh, are heading into the last weekend in October. Still got a month of football left to be played, though. NFL still got two full months of that. Um, but uh, Miami, they'll probably have more talent on the field, to be honest with you, uh, on Friday night. But Boston College, you're playing at home. Give me BC over the U. In the Big Ten on Friday night, Indiana and Minnesota will play in Minneapolis. Uh, only the third meeting since 2008 between uh, these two schools. 
and that's somewhat hard to believe if you ask me to be honest with you because you know you go back in history go back in time there a little bit it seems like these two teams would be playing each other every single year but from the uh, research that I did only the third meeting since 2008 uh, Indiana and Minnesota both coming off losses last weekend Minnesota gave Nebraska their first win and Indiana lost to Penn State at home um, Minnesota I think they'll win I think they'll get their first conference win of the season on Friday night against Indiana at home so give me the Golden Gophers over the Hoosiers Utah will go to LA to the Rose Bowl to Pasadena to play UCLA Two in a row now for the uh, Bruins. Uh, they uh, defeated uh, Cal two weeks ago and just defeated Arizona last Saturday night. But Utah, just too experienced uh, compared to this UCLA team. Um, plus, uh, you know, Utah, they've won three of the last four versus UCLA. So give me Utah over UCLA on Friday night. NC State and Syracuse now in the ACC. This game will be at 7 o'clock on Saturday night in the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Big win for Syracuse at home last weekend against North Carolina. Um, NC State, one of the other North Carolina schools in the ACC, they got blown out versus Clemson 41-7, to as I said earlier. Um, I think the Wolfpack bounced back, so give me NC State over Syracuse. Uh, South Florida now and Houston, they will play in Houston on Saturday at 3.30. Big game in the AAC, uh, possibly a preview of the American Athletic Conference Championship game. Both teams are undefeated in conference. Houston does have one loss on the year out of conference, non-conference, against Texas Tech. Texas Tech goes to Ames to play Iowa State this weekend. I'll get to that game here in a second. But both teams, South Florida and Houston, are, are, are undefeated in conference. Really a toss-up, if you ask me. I think it's going to come down to the wire. But South Florida, they were down two touchdowns uh, two weeks ago when they played Tulsa. They came back and won that game. Give me South Florida to defeat Houston on Saturday afternoon. As I said, 3.30 on ABC, ESPN2, depending on where you're at. Purdue goes to East Lansing to play Michigan State. Purdue coming off a big win. Uh, Michigan State coming off a big rivalry loss to Michigan. Uh, can the Boilermakers build off that big win versus Ohio State? Uh, I think they can, um, even though they've lost seven uh, times in a row to Michigan State dating back to 2007. Um Give me Purdue over Michigan State on Saturday at noon. Texas Tech, as I said, they go to Ames to play Iowa State. Iowa State defeated West Virginia there a couple weeks ago at home. Uh, Texas Tech, uh, they're, they're fighting for a position right now in the Big 12, which is really being led by Texas, Oklahoma, and West Virginia. Can Iowa State play spoilers again? Can they upset, can the Cyclones upset the Red Raiders? Um, I think there's a chance, maybe about a 1% chance, uh, but Texas Tech, they're just too damn good. They went to Fort Worth two weeks ago there, uh, defeated a very, very good TCU team on a Thursday night, uh, a game that I picked TCU in because I thought TCU, you know, would get back into the swing of things, get back into, uh, you know, contention for the Big 12 title to go to the Big 12 championship game to potentially win the Big 12 title, but uh, they're obviously out of it now. They have four losses, but uh, and if Texas Tech loses this, they'll really be out of it as well. So that game, you know, two weeks ago, really didn't mean doesn't mean shit, you know, at this point now. But um, Texas Tech, I think, will defeat Iowa State on Saturday. In the ACC on Saturday, got Clemson and Florida State and North Carolina and Virginia. Uh, North Carolina and Virginia, I guess I'll start there. Uh, the Cavaliers looking to win six games and go to back-to-back -back bowl games for the first time since the 2004 and 2005 seasons. Uh, I think they'll win at home against uh, the Carolina Tar Heels. 
Larry Fedora. Uh, I think he'll be packing very, very soon, whether it be after this game or at the end of the season. I think North Carolina will fire him, and uh, they'll be looking for a new head coach. Uh, Virginia defeats North Carolina on Saturday. And then Clemson, Florida State, big win for Clemson last weekend. Uh, They're going into this Florida State game now, probably thinking it's going to be a cakewalk. Uh, Florida State probably thinking, you know, no sir, Uh, no way Jose. Um, This game, it's going to be an old school smash mouth football game. Uh, Florida State and uh, Syracuse, or Florida State and Clemson, excuse me. Uh, Syracuse plays NC State, as I said, who lost to Clemson last weekend. Uh, Clemson almost lost to Syracuse there at the end of September. Um, But Clemson and Florida State. Clemson, this series, Clemson has won three in a row. The last time Clemson won three in a row, the game the following year was in Tallahassee. Just like it is this year, who won that game? Florida State. Give me Florida State to upset Clemson. Number two team goes down for the second weekend in a row. Maybe this starts the streak again of the number two curse that we had 10, 12 years ago. Uh, We've had a shit ton of top 10 teams lose already this season. You know, you go back the past three weeks. uh, At least one has lost three weeks in a row. Uh, Three three weeks ago, four top ten teams lost two weeks ago, and then one just this past weekend. Uh, As I said, I wouldn't want to be ranked in the top ten at the moment. But, really, you got to be ranked in the top ten, though, if you want to get to the college football playoff and, you know, play in the playoff and, you know, play in the national championship game. But, uh, Clemson, I think they'll get upset in Tallahassee on Saturday against Florida State. Wisconsin and Northwestern will play in the Big Ten in Evanston. This is a big battle in the Big Ten West. As I said, uh, Iowa, Purdue, Wisconsin, and Northwestern all tied uh, in uh, for first place in the Big Ten West, only with all four teams, only with one loss in conference play at the moment. But someone's got to lose this game uh, because somebody's going to win it. Um, Wisconsin, I think they'll win it. Uh, going back the last four games, they've split. Um, so really, it's a toss-up. I think it's going to be close. I think this game will also be an old-school smash-mouth you know, football game as well. Uh, you got two Big Ten teams fighting uh, for position there um, uh, You know, going into the last weekend in October. But give me the Wisconsin Badgers over the Northwestern Wildcats. Kansas State and Oklahoma play in the Big 12. Sooners, they're just too damn good for uh, Bill Snyder's uh, Kansas State Wildcats. His, uh, you know, they I like to call him, and Lee Corso likes to call him on College Game Day, old AARP, you know, because he's how old? He's in his late 70s, early 80s. Um, well, that AARP card that he probably does have, just make sure he has it on with him on Saturday because he might literally have a heart attack during sometime during this game, maybe afterwards as well, uh, because Kyler Murray and Oklahoma, they're going to put a lot of points on your ass. Oklahoma's going to win big over Kansas State on Saturday. Florida State, or Florida, excuse me, the Florida Gators, the Florida State Seminoles, don't want to get anybody pissed off because I know they're rivals. The Florida Gators will play the Georgia Bulldogs in the Florida game on Saturday at 3.30 on CBS. This game, really a toss-up, if you ask me. Both teams uh, were off this past weekend. Florida's coming off a win. Georgia's coming off a loss. Uh, Georgia won last year in Jacksonville. Um, Florida, they'll find a way to win. Give me the Gators over the Bulldogs. Going to be a fun game to watch. I won't be able to watch it, though. Won't be able to watch a lot of these games uh, again this weekend because I'll be in Happy Valley at the Iowa-Penn State game. Iowa comes to Happy Valley. Uh, Penn State has won four in a row in the series dating back to 2011. Iowa won in 08, 09, and 2010. Penn State 11, 12, and then last year, or excuse me, two years ago in 16, and then last year in 17, 
on a game-winning touchdown pass from Trace McStorley to Jawan Johnson as time expired. Um, four in a row, as I said, for Penn State. Make it five in a row. I don't think Penn State will lose three in a row at home uh, for a... I don't, I don't want to say a long time. I'm sure it'll happen you know, sooner than later. Knock on wood, hopefully not this weekend, though. Um, you know, because obviously you win some games, you lose some games. I get it. Um, but I think Penn State will make it five in a row versus Iowa dating back to 2011. Um, that was actually the last time I uh, saw Iowa play. Uh, did not see them play in 16 when they came to Happy Valley. Um, so it should be a uh, fun game. I remember, you know, growing up, uh, the 2002 game it went to double overtime. 2004 game when it was here in Happy Valley, that was the 6-4 game, as Penn State and Iowa fans uh, like to say, because Iowa won by a score of 6-4. to four. Iowa had two field goals and Penn State had two safeties. Um, hopefully it's not like that on Saturday. Uh, it, it will be cold on Saturday if you are attending the Penn State game. Uh, give my best weather report. Uh, it is supposed to rain. It is supposed to snow a little bit. At least that's what it's calling for right now in the forecast. Mid-40s, maybe 50 Saturday afternoon at 3.30 uh, when this one kicks off over in Happy Valley at Beaver Stadium. But Penn State, I think they'll defeat the Iowa Hawkeyes. Should be a very, very good game. Uh, another you know, old-school smash-mouth football. Uh, Penn State's ranked 18th right now. Iowa's ranked 19th in the top 25 poll. Uh, both teams are still fighting for position in the Big Ten as well. So that Iowa's tied with Northwestern, Purdue, and Wisconsin out west. And uh, Penn State, yeah, they have two losses to Ohio State and Michigan State uh, in uh, back-to-back games there for the second straight year. Uh, and Michigan right now taking uh, full control in the um, Big Ten East with Ohio State losing to Purdue. Uh, but Michigan still has to play Ohio State. Michigan State still has to play Ohio State. So uh, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. But Purdue, or excuse me, Penn State, I think, will defeat uh, Iowa. Kentucky goes to Missouri in the SEC. The Wildcats have won three in a row against Missouri, so make it four. Uh, Washington goes to Cal out west in the Pac-12. Huskies just too good. Give me UW over Cal. Texas A&M goes to Mississippi State in the SEC. Since 2012, the year A&M joined the SEC, these teams have split the series at three apiece, uh, with uh, Mississippi State winning the last two. Uh, Mississippi State, uh, they've had a tough schedule as of late. Uh, They get another home game against another ranked SEC opponent, they defeated Auburn there a couple weekends ago. Um, I don't think they'll defeat AM though, who's ranked going into this game as well. AM, I think, at this point, they're just a little bit better than Auburn at the time Auburn was going into Mississippi State, if that makes any sense. Um, so give me Texas AM over Mississippi State. Still going to finish probably 7 and 5 or 8 and 4 for Joe Moorhead and the Mississippi State Bulldogs down in uh, Starkville there in his first year and still go to a good bowl game. So um, with the schedule you've had, Mississippi State, you guys have done pretty damn good. Um, so Texas A&M, Jimbo Fisher, he'll uh, out-coach Joe Moorhead there in that game, I think. Um, wouldn't be surprised, though, if Mississippi State does upset the Aggies uh, and pick up their uh, second um second upset of a ranked team at home this season. Uh, Washington State goes to Stanford. Uh, Cougars riding high right now after uh, winning uh, last weekend last weekend's game against Oregon there. Uh, you know, game day was in town. Everything was going good for them. They're up 27 nothing at half and then it's 27-20. And they uh, they almost really blew that game, almost lost that game, but they hung on. Um, They have to go on the road now to play Stanford. Going to be a tough game for them. Uh, I have written down here Stanford to win, and I'm going to stick with that. 
uh, as of now. I could change my mind by the end of the week, so be sure to follow me on Twitter at ColeHandLuke96 if you haven't done so already. If I do change my mind for that, I'll tweet out uh, that, you know, I'll, I'm changing my mind. I'm going to pick Washington State to defeat Stanford. Uh, but as of now, I still have Stanford penciled in to defeat Washington State. Boise State goes to uh, Colorado Springs to play Air Force. Uh, Boise State, they're just too good. Broncos over the Falcons in NFL terms. Tennessee and the SEC goes to South Carolina. As I said, if you want to uh, volunteer, if you want to sign up to volunteer to play football for Tennessee, go over to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to like and follow Gridiron Ring. If you do do that, it'll send you uh, to where uh, it'll send you the link to where you need to go to uh, sign up to play uh, football for the Tennessee Volunteers. So if you want to do that, do what I just said. The links are in the description below. Tennessee, South Carolina Volunteers own the series 25-9 to two, but South Carolina has won six of the last ten. Uh, Make it uh, make it seven of the last eleven. I have South Carolina penciled in to win this game as well, even though Sheets is better than Seven Eleven and Wawa. Um, Notre Dame and Navy uh, playing for the ninety second consecutive season, dating back to nineteen twenty seven. This year's game, Navy home game, are uh, normally uh, played at neutral sites when they play Notre Dame. This year's game played out at uh, is going to be played out at uh, Qualcomm Stadium out in San Diego. As I said, 92nd consecutive season. However, this is the first time that these two teams, Notre Dame and Navy, have played each other west of the Mississippi River. Notre Dame, they have had some tough tests already. Uh, well, some close games, I should say. You know, Ball State. Vanderbilt, Pitt, now they got to go, uh, you know, play Navy at a neutral site. Uh, they got to play Northwestern on the road next weekend as well in Evanston. That game uh, is going to be at uh, 730 on ABC uh, next weekend, November 3rd. Uh, so maybe they're looking, you know, ahead to that at the moment. Uh, but I want it, you know, even though Navy only has two wins on the season, you know, somewhat of a down year for the midshipmen. Uh, you know, this game, going to be close. Going to be another, you know, old school smash mouth football game this upcoming weekend as we're getting into the last weekend of October. Um, Notre Dame, they're just too good, just too talented, um, you know, than the Navy. I, I would really, really like to pick Navy, but... And, you know, Navy's beat them before. They beat them two years ago in Jacksonville when, uh, you know, this was also a Navy home game. As I said, when Navy plays Notre Dame, uh, and it's a home game for the midshipmen, it's always at a neutral site because they've said that uh, Navy's home football stadium is not big enough uh, for a Notre Dame-Navy game. Uh, So Notre Dame, just too talented. Give me, unfortunately... As I said before, and I'll say it again, Notre Dame's time is coming. Maybe it's this weekend. Maybe it's next weekend against uh, Northwestern. Maybe it's when they play Syracuse at Yankee Stadium on November 17th. Maybe it's against USC on the 24th of November uh, as their uh, regular season finale, as their last game of the season as well before the uh, bowl season begins. Um, But give me Notre Dame over Navy this weekend really like to pick Navy, but I just can't. I already have, you know, Florida State over Clemson as my, not a big upset, but the way Florida State's been playing this year, that would be a big upset. Um, I I wouldn't be surprised, though, you know, because like I said earlier, too, for the uh, third straight week, at least one top ten team has lost. Three, three weeks ago, four, two weeks ago, one this past weekend. Uh, and, you know, Clemson moved up to two. You know, that's my upset for this weekend. Them 
losing to Florida State, but Notre Dame's right there as well, you know, in the top five, and they uh, they could potentially, you know, slip up against Navy. Uh, as I said, a team they've lost to before, but um, we'll see what happens, but give me the Fighting Irish over the Midshipmen. In the Big 12 Saturday night on ABC, the Texas Longhorns will travel to Stillwater to play Oklahoma State. Texas, they own the series, but Oklahoma State has won six of the last eight. Now they're going into a hostile environment, Boone Pickett Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Texas, they beat the other Oklahoma team there a couple weeks ago in the Cotton Bowl, the Red River uh, rivalry there. Uh, They defeat the Oklahoma Sooners. Can they defeat the Oklahoma State Cowboys now? Uh, As I said, Texas, OU, and West Virginia, really the three teams in the driver's seat uh, at the top of the leaderboard right now in the Big 12. If Texas wins this, uh, they play Texas Tech at home the following weekend, I believe. Maybe it's in Lubbock. Don't quote me on that. I'd have to look. Uh, But I know they have to play Texas Tech um, the following week. Uh, you know, so they could be looking ahead to that as well. But, uh, you know, head coach for both Notre Dame and Texas, Brian Kelly and Tom Herman, no better. And they'll have their teams ready to play. Uh, so Texas and Notre Dame both basically going on the road. Texas is for sure uh, in a true road game. Notre Dame, you know, neutral site. Navy still has to travel you know, as well, Oklahoma State gets a home game against Texas. As I said, hostile environment. Texas has gone in there before and won. Uh, they own the series, but Oklahoma State's won six of eight going back to 2010. But Texas football really hasn't been the same since they were in that 09 national championship game against Alabama. Um, Tom Herman, you know, he's got the Longhorns back up top now right where the Texas Longhorns deserve to be at. And I think they'll show the nation what Texas football has been doing all season long and what they're capable of doing to other teams if they're in their way. So Oklahoma State, move out of the way. Texas will defeat the Oklahoma State Cowboys on Saturday night on ABC. Out west now, Oregon and Arizona in the Pac-12 and Hawaii and Fresno State. Oregon, I think, will bounce back after losing to Washington State on the road last weekend after defeating UW, the other Washington team, at home the week before that. Uh, so give me Oregon over Arizona. Uh, probably going to be a close game. And then Hawaii and Fresno State. Bulldogs uh, have won 6 of 8 in that series. Make it 2 in a row and 7 of 9. So Oregon and Fresno State, I think, will win to round out my college football week nine predictions so thank you guys for listening to this audio recording of my week nine college football predictions if you guys like this audio recording this video be sure to give this video a thumbs up be sure to subscribe to your iron ring right here on youtube as well as i've said before like follow and subscribe to your iron ring on facebook twitter instagram youtube periscope go check out your iron rings website as well All the links, including my Twitter and Instagram links, are in the description below. So you can give me a follow at CoanLuke96 on Twitter, at ElGottaSart96 on Instagram. You can do that as well. So, uh, again, thank you guys for listening. Always greatly appreciated for all the views that I get on uh, these videos. Um, I'll see everybody next week for 2018 College Football Week 10 predictions and NFL week nine predictions Uh, and as of now WWE crown jewel is still planned uh, to go on so I will have predictions and a preview for that out next week as well so again thank you guys for listening uh, to my audio recording of my 2018 week nine college football predictions